Hi everybody, in this video we will be studying about the chapter on pathology which is collection, transport, preservation and processing of various clinical specimens. So this is a chapter under the clinical pathology that we have in our first year BSc AHS. In previous class we studied about introduction to clinical pathology. Uh, which was about how the clinical pathology works and what are the important things that come under clinical pathology. To study clinical pathology, the important uh, branch of it is to study about the clinical specimen. So how the clinical specimens are collected, transported, or preserved and processed in order to get a report on the specimen that is being obtained by the patient. And, uh, and, I, and after processing the report, tells us what disease or the what microbe that is inf that infecting the that is infecting the uh, patient so moving on also introduction to clinical pathology is being given uh, according to different studies about two third of medical decisions are made on laboratory results surely because of the objective data that they can provide for the healthcare providers. So this clinical pathology helps us in making a medical decisions based on the, the result that is being obtained from the labs. And this gives a data sheet that is it gives us the actual uh, uh, what uh, things that is being happening inside the uh, patient can be obtained from a clinical specimen that is obtained from him. So the clinical pathological study of specimen is done in four main steps, which are collection, transport, preservation, and processing. So the, what is a clinical specimen? So a clinical specimen means it is a biological material like swabs, aspirated fluids, blood, serum, plasma, feces and tissues collected from the human and non-human sources or animals for diagnostic purposes and study on a study of it or analysis of it. So note that a clinical specimen is a biological material which is obtained from the human or non-human sources. These uh, biological materials are obtained in the form of swabs or aspirated fluids. Aspirated fluids is uh, they are going to pull in the uh, Pull in the fluids into an uh, syringes, okay, and blood, serum, plasma, uh, feces, and tissues are being collected. So the various types of specimens that could be collected are sputum. Sputum is or in Canada it is called as kapha, and uh, GIT, which is gastrointestinal tract uh, specimens that are being obtained, urine, effusions. CSF is a cerebrospinal fluid, pap smear is obtained from the vagina, vagina and a feces which are stool. So these are the different specimens that are obtained from the human body. So when a clinical specimen is obtained, it must be in appropriate to the patient's clinical presentation. So whenever you obtain a clinical specimen, it must have a proper, uh, the specimen must give you a proper result on what the patient is actually suffering from. And it should be collected at the right time and in a right way to minimize the contamination. It shouldn't spread to the uh, uh, the person who is collecting the specimen neither to the nearby uh, patients who, has, uh, who have come for uh, collection of specimen and uh, it should be collected in such a manner that uh, it does not affect the other staff, uh, laboratory staff and it should be collected using correct tools like swabs and uh, it should be correctly documented with the process and stored and uh, transported properly so the collection uh, the first step of uh, any uh, clinical pathology which includes collection uh, this specimen collection is a process of obtaining tissue of fluids for laboratory laboratory analysis or near patient testing uh, this uh, specimen is being collected 
from either from tissues or fluids for laboratory analysis. It is often the first step in determining the diagnosis and treatment. The process must minimize health and safety risk to all the staff handling the sample and risk of erroneous data result. It must be collected in such a way that it does not uh, cause any uh, risk to the staff who is being obtaining the clinical specimen. Neither should it cause any errors in the data or the results that is being obtained from the clinical specimen. Moving on, so the, the different safety considerations that must be considered while collecting an uh, specimen is they must follow certain standard precautions and guidelines to treat all this uh, treat all the specimen as potential hazards. So while obtaining a specimen, it should in spite of it not being so uh, what to say so hazardous, it should be considered all specimens should be considered as they are hazardous too. In irrespective of what kind of disease it is and moving to the second point you should use a, per, a perfect a proper barriers to pr uh, for protection like gloves and gowns and goggles uh, protective eyewear face masks and apron should be should be used in order to avoid splashing that happens while collecting the specimen and the external surface of the container that is being used for collecting a specimen must not be contaminated Moving to the fourth point, the collected specimen before ad, uh, it should be collected before administering any antimicrobial agent. That is, uh, the patient shouldn't be going under any uh, uh, tablets or uh, injections to get to get the microbes killed. So those antimicrobial agents should be avoided while collection of specimen. And the um, specimen collected should have a very little contamination from indigenous flora indigenous flora is the uh, microbes that is present in the surroundings so it shouldn't be uh, the specimen must not come in contact with the indigenous flora and the specimen which is collected must be labeled with the patient name and uh, his date of birth or any other number the number which is uh, which is mentioned by the hospital uh, and the patient must be verified with this armband that is put on his wrists and it should uh, the label must contain date time of collection and the specimen source from where the specimen is being collected so these are the important things that uh, that should be labeled on the specimen container moving to the next part, step of the collection of uh, I mean the process of uh, so clinical specimen handling is transport so uh, this uh, while transporting certain clinical specimen, uh, they, uh, it must be avoided that there is very minimum co contact with the specimen. Uh, there should be a plastic sealable bags with the separate pouches for paperwork, like the while uh, putting the labels or the any paperwork that is being going on, like uh, when they give a report on it. So the specimen must not get uh, spilled on the paperwork. To avoid that, it should be put in a plastic sealable bags, and these uh, collection devices are are sterile equipment and uh, aseptic techniques to uh, collect the specimen. So usage of collection devices, sterile equipment, and aseptic technique is required. Aseptic is without any sepsis, and various types of transport media are provided depending on the type of the culture. So depending on the type of the culture, there are various other uh, transport medias that could be used. So swabs must always be transported in a moist, uh, moist medium. And the, uh, the specimen, as I told, shouldn't be labeled with the date, time of uh, collection and specimen sources. So these are the important things that should be mentioned on the specimen. Otherwise, it might get misplaced with the other patient. So it is very much important to write the patient's name, the uh, patient's uh, uh, day, uh, time of collection, date, specimen source and all. And if the specimen is sub uh, submitted for culture also has a nucleic acid amplification test ordered. First disinfect the processing area with 10% bleaching solution or DNA EV. The specimen should be spit split prior to any manipulation and separate aliquot 
set aside for molecular testing if this is not possible the specimen should be sent to the molecular testing section first so before the specimen is being submitted to the uh, submitted for culturing it should be clearly our uh, processed uh, uh, processed in uh, the processing area must be clearly disinfected with 10% uh, bleaching solution or uh, dna av away so in our, uh, this disinfection is done in order to avoid any ma uh, wrong uh, testing of the uh, given specimen so in if this is not possible the specimen should be sent, sent to the molecular testing section and while transporting uh, transporting all the specimens to laboratory must be promptly done and this ensures the survival and isolation of fastidious uh, organism and prevent overgrowth by more hardly ba hardy bacteria so this transportation must take a very short time and it uh, as uh, the duration of specimen must be kept short because when the duration is made more like if the specimen is uh, is being uh, given at the morning and it should be transported by one or two hours in order to avoid the growth of any hardy bacteria which cannot be uh, which can uh, give erroneous uh, results in the tests so this transport to microbiology uh, laboratory must be done in a container which is securely sealed wipe uh, the bottles must be wiped if it is a csf or a blood on outside thoroughly with disinfectant such as uh, 70 percent alcohol swabs and uh, Povidine iodine should be avoided on the rubber se septum or uh, of the TI or the blood culture bottles. So uh, the well, the blood culture bottles that we see have a rubber uh, rubber sealing on the top, rubber septum on the top. Which uh, the alcohol swab shouldn't touch there, or the uh, povidine iodine should be should be avoided over there because it might give the error uh, errors in the test. Okay, and CSF while being transported, it must be kept in 20 degrees Celsius to 35 degrees Celsius. And blood that is being transported uh, in the blood uh, should always be uh, what, transported in the blood culture bottles because the syringes do not contain any anticoagulant in them. But these uh, bottles are uh, bottle, bottles are being manufactured, manufactured in such a way that they have uh, anticoagulants in them. And blood culture bottles should not be stored at uh, should be stored at four hundred uh, four degrees Celsius when not in use and pre warmed to room temperature or uh, thirty seven degrees Celsius before inoculation. So when blood culture bottles are being transported, it must be uh, stored at four degrees Celsius. And when it is you when when it is not in use, when not in use, and when they are make, uh, making it ma uh, making it ready for processing the test, they must be pre warmed at room temperature, and uh, in uh, inoculation must be done. Transportation uh, transportation involves uh, many important things such as room temperature is required, refrigeration is required, frozen frozen specimens of, uh, can be used and start and other requirements are also important part of uh, transportation so other requirements under transportation are the uh, all the needles and sharp should be removed from the specimen before transporting all specimens transported must be via courier must be transported in a sealed biohazard leak proof puncture resistance container tightly closed before transportation and please place the uh, specimens in the ziplock portions of the, the specimen pack. Completed requisite is to be placed in the outside pocket of the specimen seal, a uh, ziplock cover. So, moving on to the next uh, type. Next uh, st uh, type of study of uh, specimen uh, under clinical pathology is preservation. So the biological uh, samples that is being stored under specific conditions are analyzed within a period of defined stability. So this uh, required stability are uh, used for analysis of the biometrics. Typically include a short term stability at room temperature, freeze or thaw stability and long term stability in the frozen biometrics. Typically at minus 20 degrees or minus 70 degrees Celsius. So 
the preservation must be in such a way that either the specimen specimen must be must be a short term i must have short term uh, stability at room temperature or or it should be freezed or thawed uh, for the stability and a uh, long term stability which is put into frozen bio mattresses and uh, kept for minus 20 to minus 70 degrees celsius so sample must be stored over a period of time in special conditions depending upon the needs so like dark or low temperature addition of preservatives antioxidants or adjustment of the ph valve value so these are the important uh, things that is being noted under preservation so various pro uh, points that should be noted uh, for preservation uh, the sampling procedure must be noted uh, the filtration must be done uh, the storage container must be checked and physical and chemical treatment must be seen uh, given sample matrix matrix should be observed location and frequency of it and cleaning procedure and the appropriate quality control measures should be taken moving to the next step under the clinical pathology study uh, is processing uh, so the processing of a specimen may include mixing the specimen to ensure that all the components are evenly distributed throughout the sample or spinning the sp uh, specimen in a centrifuge to separate the serum plasma layer for the, from the red cells. This includes for an example if it is a red blood cells it is centrifuged in order to obtain a serum plasma layer serum or a plasma layer and uh, red cells separately. So that is processing. You process a specimen in such a way that you get the uh, simplified form of uh, simplified form of the specimen to observe it under microscope. So various types of processing are automated processing, rapid techniques. So autom under rapid techniques, you have stains. Uh, you can put a uh, stain and observe it under the microscope uh, or you can uh, put the stain and observe the color reaction that is happening under the specimen uh, under naked eye and you can do immunochromatography and EIA techniques based on nucleic acid detection okay so this is the types of processing that is being observed in clinical specimens moving to the next part which is the phases of processing there are different phases so within the conventional processing of the samples that arrive at the microbiological biology laboratory four well differentiated phases can be established thus that must be carried out following this order so the phases of processing include pre-treatment phase inoculation of culture media preparing of the spears and uh, the incubation so pre-treatment phase is the phase at which the specimen which is being collected undergoes a certain disinfection of it uh, from all, uh, the outside container undergoes disinfection then the uh, pre-treatment is done uh, then comes the inoculation of culture media so if the culture media is obtained uh, it is inoculated uh, in such a way that the culture is being obtained after a certain time so that is inoculation of culture media then uh, preparing the smears so the smears are prepared by dilution of the smears which will be will be, we will be studying in the future classes like what is inoculation and preparation of smears uh, then incubation uh, incubation is storing the culture media is in certain temperature that is called as incubation moving to the processing of different specimens uh, csf and fluid samples are and sterile cavities surgical specimens and rapid antigen detection tests should always be processed first so certain fluid samples that is being obtained like csf uh, should be uh, and surgical specimens that is being obtained must undergo the very uh, processing very fast so they require a rapid results when there is surgery happening on the table the specimen arrives from the sur uh, surgical OTs so these specimens are uh, uh, undergo processing first Moving to the next point, this group is followed by samples with a limited processing time such as cultures of mycobacteria or tests for nucleic acid detection tissue samples or recent uh, aspirates and uh, respiratory samples. So the second uh, group of uh, samples that undergo processing are uh, the 
uh, aspirations that are obtained very recently or the respiratory samples like uh, sputum or the nasal uh, nasal or the oral swabs that are being obtained moving to the next type uh, next uh, group of uh, specimens that undergo processing are stool samples that are being uh, transported uh, and uh, they, these uh, processing cannot be done in a period of time between 30 minutes and one hour so they take time so the processing of stool samples are quite late moving to the next which is urine samples and swabs with, uh, which are transported uh, in transported uh, in the medium uh, should be observed then the blood can uh, blood cultures can be uh, maintained at room temperature, uh, temperature up to 4 hours so blood cultures can be kept for at, uh, 4 hours or more than it 4 hours after uh, it is being obtained from the patient and after transporting it moving to the next so this ends up on collection transfer preservation and processing in general uh, there is no deep uh, study of different clinical specimen so in the next coming videos we'll be studying about different clinical samples how are they going to be collected transported preserved and processed and how are they examined uh, what are the things that is going to happen in in laboratories in order to obtain the data sheet of the result that are from the clinical specimen will be studied in the upcoming videos so if like if you do like the video subscribe to the channel because subscribing makes up all this efforts that I have been putting on the slides for you guys to show how this helpus works in RGUHS. Hope you like the video. Until then, bye.